Hello, we're going to talk about what protocols and standards are in this video. So standards, first of all, because standards are not only in the networking topic, we also have standards elsewhere in computing. A standard is a widely agreed upon set of rules. Now standards are so, so important in computer science because when a standard is consistently followed, it allows different hardware or software to interact regardless of the product itself or also the manufacturer. And this gives us compatibility, which is where multiple different products can work together without any issues. And that's so important given how many different manufacturers there are, given the fact that different countries have got different systems, we need compatibility to make things like the internet work smoothly. So like I say, standards exist elsewhere in both computer science and real life. It's not only networking. So for example, USB is an example of a standard because you can go to any country in the world and their USB ports will work the same way as our USB ports. Likewise, websites work the same in every country because there are a standard set of languages which programmers use, which all web browsers follow and show consistently. We've looked at Unicode earlier in the course. Unicode and ASCII are both examples of standards. In fact, you can see this PDF here, over a thousand pages long, is the standard for Unicode. It's a very, very long list of rules, but it's widely agreed upon all over the world. I mean, you've got like file formats, also standards. These are really compatible, work on all different computers. So it's a misconception that standards only relate to protocols, although protocols are an example of a standard. A protocol is a set of rules for transferring data. And all of the popular protocols are examples of standards because they're widely agreed upon and are used worldwide. And so the reason for having protocols is very similar to the reason for having other standards. We want that compatibility. We need protocols so that different devices have a consistent way of interpreting each other's messages. If we don't have protocols, it would be incredibly hard to communicate smoothly between all these different manufactured devices. Right, if my laptop wants to send a message to this server, message isn't binary, but what on earth does that message mean? doesn't know what that message means unless there are a clear set of rules which tell it what the message means. So it'd be much better if we could go back to the start and instead agree upon a set of rules. So here we've got three rules as part of my super duper simple protocol. Each packet's two bytes, the destination address is in the first byte and the remaining data is in ASCII. Now those rules, if everyone understands these rules, everyone agrees to these rules, this now means you can communicate and they'd be able to interpret what this binary means. So the second rule is most relevant for this router. It's looking at the destination address, which is in the first byte. That enables it to pass it to the server. The server doesn't really care about the first byte, but it cares about the fact that the remaining data is in ASCII, it means it can convert this to ASCII and see that the message is A. This only works because we've got a protocol which is widely agreed upon. Now, there are lots of particular protocols for communication. In fact, this is the slightly intimidating list you've got to know about. Most of these we'll look at in the next video. Because there are so many, we want to categorize these protocols somehow. And the way we categorize protocols is into what are called layers. So these aren't just scattered about, these are all grouped into layers. And the layers have names. These four names are the most common. However, you don't need to know these names for GCSE. I'm just including them so you can see how this looks like in reality. This is how the protocols you need to know about group together in these layers. Now, what exactly is a layer? Well, a layer is a grouping of protocols that all perform a similar function in the communication process. So we can look at the bottom here, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. We're gonna cover these three in a future video. But you might know, roughly speaking, they all do a very similar job. We can substitute those pretty easily. Likewise, at the top, all of these purple protocols do a similar job. We only ever have one of these at a time. So we only ever have one protocol running at each layer. And we're able to sub these protocols in and out as I see fit. So I'm able to substitute these as long as I'm doing it within a layer. Also, the order of these layers is important because when packets get sent, the first protocol to run is the one at the top. Then this passes the packet to the next protocol, which does a bit of work. Then it goes to the next protocol 
and the next protocol. It works its way down this stack of layers. When packets arrive at the destination, it starts at the bottom protocol, then it works its way up the layers until it reaches the top protocol. That's when the packet is fully processed. So the layers are really important for keeping this organized. And that's because each layer handles one part of either sending or receiving of the packet, and then it will just pass it on to the next layers protocol. So you need to know that definition in red at the top. You've also got to be able to understand the benefits of layers existing as a concept. So an important fact is that each layer is independent of the others. How does that give us a benefit? Well, the benefit is this means protocols can be changed within one layer without affecting the other layers. And this means I'm able to flexibly change what protocol I want to use depending on your task. And this explains certain things like, well, let's say I've got my laptop, I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I'm on a web browser, on YouTube, watching a video, it's all going fine. But I might decide maybe a stronger connection, I want to plug in an Ethernet cable to my laptop. This won't affect anything else in the communication process because all I've done is just substituted a protocol at one layer, which I'm able to do without affecting any of the other layers. So I can make those sort of flexible changes without really impacting the rest of the communications process. So these are benefits for users. In terms of computer scientists having to develop these protocols, well, because a layer represents just one part of the communication process, it makes it easier to develop and test new protocols because you only have to focus on that one layer. It would be very daunting to have to create a protocol which covered every single aspect of the communication process. Communicating over the internet is so, so complicated. We don't really want there to be one protocol which covers all of it. That's a really daunting task to have to create. It's much more reasonable to develop a protocol just for one small part of that communications process. This is like decomposition you learn about in paper two. And because this is only a smaller chunk of the process, if you're creating hardware, the hardware is easier to make compatible because each layer is a clear standard. It's really clear what needs to happen at each layer for your hardware device to plug in and connect with all the other compatible devices. So us producing protocols within these layers, within these categories is both good for the users with this flexibility, but also good for both software developers and hardware developers because it makes it easier to create and easier to make compatible.